In this short episode, I want to talk about the C++ preprocessor. This is something that we've uh, seen already, uh, used a little bit of it, but I wanted to sort of formalize some of the constructs that we've seen and and um, sort of discuss uh, some other things that are available for the preprocessor. So um, C++ makes extensive use of preprocessing directives. There are these, these pound commands that uh, we see spattering all over uh, different programs. Uh, the purpose of the preprocessing commands is to uh, do some types of, of uh, uh, text manipulation and macro expansion and various other things prior to doing the actual compilation of a program. Um, so, for instance, when you do something like a pound include and then give the name of a file, uh, what happens is that uh, the preprocessor will find that file and place it into your program uh, at whatever location you've provided. Um, and there are a number of uh, times or a number of conditions as to when uh, those files will be included and when they'll not be included or when macros will, be, macros will be expanded and not expanded and so forth. And so I wanted to sort of discuss those here in this episode. Now the common types of preprocessing include file inclusion, macro expansion, and conditional compilation, and that's what we'll discuss here in this short episode. So first of all, file inclusion. Um, there are basically two types of file inclusion, and they're shown here on the right. Uh, the first one is when you do file inclusion with the angle brackets and giving a file name. This indicates that the preprocessor search uh, for the, um, uh, the file in a predefined library path. Um, so on your system, and anytime you have a C++ uh, compiler or whatever, there's a number of, uh, of libraries that are included with the system in certain directories. And so C++ compilers, or preprocessors rather, will search for uh, these files in some of the standard places um, so that uh, they can be included into, uh, into your files. Now, the other form for doing a file inclusion is to use the quotation marks, and that basically tells the preprocessor to first look in the current directory or the relative directory to the file for the, uh, for the, given, fi for the given include file. If it doesn't find it there, then uh, some preprocessors will then start looking in their standard library locations. Another kind of preprocessor directive is to define a symbolic constant. And this is, this is something that we've been using as well. I've been including these kinds of things in uh, some of our recent uh, assignments. Uh, for instance, in the uh, maze program, I have a file called constants.h, and that has a number of symbolic constants defined in it. So here's an example in this slide of defining a symbolic constant called pi using pound defined pi and then giving a number, uh, in this case 3.14159. And then later in your program, what you can do is use the constant pi, pi, uh, instead of giving the constant number. Uh, this way, if you want to change the precision of, of pi, for instance, uh, you can do that where the macro is defined or where the symbolic con constant is defined, rather, uh, so that uh, everywhere where the uh, where the constant pi is being used um, uh, can reflect the change and you only have to make the change in one place rather than having to make the change everywhere in your program. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a very uh, uh, common use of uh, preprocessor directives to define these types of constants. It uh, makes it uh, a lot more maintainable in your system if you can define a constant in one place so that you only have to maintain that one location. Another kind of preprocessor directive is a macro. And the way that a macro works is that you do a pond define, you give a macro a name, and then you use parentheses uh, to define your input. And then the very next thing is uh, what the macro should be expanded to. Now, one of the things you have to be careful with with uh, macros is that you need to make sure that you enclose parameters and parentheses when you're, when you're doing your definition. Um, the reason is for uh, helping to avoid potential ambiguities in your programs. Um, 
and uh, if you don't do it, then you may have times when the expansions uh, end up giving you uh, behaviors that are unexpected. So here is a definition of a macro on the right-hand side. So we do, do, we do pound define and circle area of x uh, gets expanded to pi times parentheses x times parentheses x. And so when I need to actually use this macro, I can uh, give the... Uh, I can give the macro circle area and then the, uh, uh, the value that I want to have x replaced with in the macro. Uh, what will happen then is the, the preprocessor will, will replace circle underscore area of r with pi times r times r. Another uh, use of preprocessor directives is in doing conditional compilation. So if you look at the top here on the left-hand side, we have if ndef id, pound define id, pound ndef. And what this says is that if id is not defined, then define it. Uh, in this way, then uh, you can uh, ensure that, um, that a constant or a macro is defined only once in a program. So if you try to redefine the macro again, or try to redefine the, um, the constant again, then you'll get a compiler error, um, and that, of course, is going to be a problem. So you use these kinds of conditional compilation if and if things to make sure that things only get defined once. So if you look on the right-hand side here, we have the if and if, and then the pound and if at the bottom. Uh, and if foo underscore h is not defined, then you define it, and then you include your your definition of your class or declaration of your class in the uh, in the if block so what will happen then if later you try to include this file again uh, the next time uh, foo underscore h will be defined so you'll just skip that entire uh, end if block or skip all the way through the end if block um, so that you don't uh, redefine class of foo now um, this is sort of a, an old way of doing things. There's actually a, uh, a, a another um, uh, preprocessor directive called pragma once. And when you do that, then that ensures that, that the include file or the entire file that's, that appears below the pragma once directive, um, it'll ensure that that thing is only included once uh, in, in your program, or at least uh, in the context of of where the include file is being used. Um, so it effectively accomplishes the same thing as doing the if and if. Um, um, so uh, I would I I usually use and actually Visual Studio will do this automatically for us. We'll use this pragma once, and it is actually much easier to use. Uh, another thing that you can do is. Um, now, maybe you want to include some type of debugging trace in your program, uh, but you don't want to have to turn it on all the time. You might, maybe if you're, in a, if you're compiling your program in a debug mode, uh, you'll want to print out all your trace information, but then when you create a, a release version of your program, you don't want to include all of that stuff. So uh, by doing an if def and then giving a, um, um, a keyword and then uh, having this this end if block, uh, what will happen is that if the when you create a or when you compile your program with a dash d and then underscore d debug um, flag, uh, what will happen is that the compiler or the preprocessor will first get run and it'll expose all of these blocks that have this if def underscore debug um, keyword in it. So the useful thing with that is that let's say that you want you don't want to include your tracing information uh, later, then you just stop passing this uh, this dash d flag, uh, and then your your output uh, won't include the uh, the tracing information. Um, I'm going to create some examples. We'll take a look at how all of this works in a screencast, uh, just so that uh, we can see all of that in in action. Uh, especially this thing of doing these debugs as well as some of the Mac expansions and so forth. So anyway, that, ex that uh, concludes this episode.